And we are live. Hi, everyone. Good evening to all of you who's watching this uh, episode three of uh, Creative Spotlight. I'm going. I'm. Jo- I'm. Go- I am very excited for this session because I think I'm going to have nosebleed <laughs> because we have a very special guest for this session. Our good friend Sandra Dan from Australia uh, for the topic, which is a. I, I think this this topic is a very very good, uh, a very good topic on which I will also learn a lot of things. Uh, good evening, Julius and Jem. How are you all doing? Good, good evening, evening, sir. sir. <laughs> good evening, Paul. I think I'm going to have a no split. <laughs> it, no worries, uh, Julius. I, I I also be I also be here for you. I'm always <laughs> off. I I have put some tissues right here on my. <laughs> No problem. I think Sandra will be very, very. Uh, will be very. This will be a very good session to for us to yes, do sir. a lot of our like like uh, exploration in terms of creativity. We're going to have a lot of lots and lots of session uh, product demonstration, and also some stories from Sandra itself. Yeah, herself. Okay, so I'm going to introduce our resource speaker for this. Uh, episode, and uh, she's she's a very good friend of mine virtually because uh, we met on a lot of occasions. I've also guested on some of uh, the trainings that she had uh, way back last year. So he's a he's also a community expert for Adobe and an Express Ambassador, on which we are, almost all of us here in, in this session, is doing the, the that part. Uh, some of it will be, if you check on the website of Sandra, she has a website, and uh, if you check that website, I'm just going to share my screen so you could see it. Uh, share screen, so I could uh, give you she is a Photoshop teacher. She's also a photographer. And as you would see here, it's it's a very great uh, website. Uh, you can almost tell every detail. Uh, she's a creative coach, a digital artist and creator. And in this session, we're going to learn about how uh, her workflow is uh, being done. And uh, she's going to give us uh, an insight on that. So without further ado, I'm going to add our resource speaker for this session, which is Sandra Dan. Hello, hello, Sandra. How are you? Hi, everybody. How are we? All the way from Australia. It's a lovely 5 past 11 at night. I'll need the (laughs) coffee to keep me going. Um, But it's a real pleasure to actually come in and talk about a topic that I, I am passionate about. And it's it starts from when you're getting into composite or creative work. Is how do you use that conceptual thinking? Um, and I get asked often, you know, wh- how do you choose your image? How do you choose your elements? You know, what are your color choices? And for me, it's very organic. Um, and when I say it's organic, if I look back when I was a child, uh, I loved coloring in. And so I was one of those kids that coloured in the lines. I hated colouring outside the lines. So, you know, hands up if you're you're a bit like that. I, I was like that. I did art at school, um, you know, and then, you know, life comes in and then you start to look at a career. And then as the career developed, I became an adult educator. And so I was a corporate trainer. Um, so I did a lot of what I call management skills, soft skills, all of those things. And why I'm sharing this little bit of the story is it's where I'm at now. And so, you know, I had a, a job change and so I decided to do a, an interior styling um, course, which I was in my element with colours. And then I started in photography and I uh, I started as a landscape photographer, and so I was madly getting out there with the camera. But then I discovered a little program called Photoshop. And so I started to replace skies, put in my technical term, 
um, and I'm doing a trademark on this one, is whack in a tree or whack in a building, very much the Aussie slang. And so I started doing altered landscapes and then I started from really looking at doing composite images. So Roland and, and Gem and Julius, it's all about the journey that I've been on is to where I am now. And so I would not call myself a photographer now. Um, I can appreciate people still love getting out with the camera. For me, it's more about the digital art, the creative, sitting in front of a computer and creating art digitally. And that's where I get the enjoyment from. So I thought I'd do a little bit of a brief journey so you know where I've, I've come from um, as such. And uh, I'm, I'm in what I would call the space I was meant to be. And sometimes it takes a long while for you to find that space. Sometimes you find that space young. So, yes. you know, um, and you reinvent yourself. If you haven't reinvented yourself many times, then, you know, I think it's all of those experiences that come through. So uh, that's a little bit of a snapshot there, Roland. Yeah. Wow. I totally agree with that. And I, I actually have chills when you said you have to, you have to, like, evolve or to reinvent yourself actually that's mm -hmm. one of the key things that resonates with me when you, you're, you're saying that because uh as we all know uh we have this uh like this challenge lately that we've been on our own when, when our when we are on our homes <laughs> uh it's about reinventing ourselves and how do we we, we, be, we become more successful or more um into our next level to upskill mm. okay so i think i have some some questions for you sandra because before we start the, with the actual session yeah um with, with your topic about um about digital creativity and uh can you tell me any specific like influences or people you you aspire or inspire to to do work or to to collaborate with yeah, that's that's a that's a multifaceted question there, Roland. <laughs> um, influence for me in the early days, it was landscape photographers, but I've also liked art. So you know, if I looked at some of the artists that I like and their colours, Monet, Constable, <laughs> Turner, um, Van Gogh, you know, his his bright colours. Though I'm more in the softer colour palette, so the artists in in there. Um, you know, looking at different photography, abstract shapes, forms, street photography, um, you know, all different types of genres. So if I look at now where I'm at, um, I like looking at the work of like Maggie Taylor, Kevin Sloan, who's a painter. Um, you know, there's another one and um, I always pronounce her name wrong. It's Katrin Weiss. Um, she's a German, mm. you know, I always get that wrong. Um, but I, I look at their work and it gives me inspiration, but then I look at what I want to do and what sort of do I want to create. Um, and I think that's the best thing that if you're starting out as a creative or you're in an art field is exposing yourself to different types of genres um, and looking and looking at magazines, um, movies. I, you know, if I go and I read a lot, um, <laughs> Uh, you know, look, I have no problem admitting I'm a Harry Potter fan, Lord of the mm. Rings, I've just binge watched The Hobbit, um, you know, so now I'm on another sort of binge watching. And I think that's what gives you inspiration. And I think yes. that if you go as a creative and have the blinkers on, you're really not exposing yourself to what's out there. Um, and I think as a, as a creative, it's about telling or sharing your life stories, your experiences, your feelings, your emotions. As a creative, your emotion could be on one day right up there and then the next day it could be right down on the on the ground. And so it's shifting. Um, and it comes into this question is that as a creative, I used to get a little bit worried about, oh, I'm not feeling creative today. What am I going to do? Oh, this is not good. Um, and now I've learned to roll with it. 
so I may not be creating images, but I'm doing things for social media and different things like that. Um, reading books, um, you know, I've just finished a book. Um, so it's all of those things, Roland, that come into the package, if that makes sense, of being a creative and what inspires. Someone might be totally different. It's not right or wrong. It's just what I say is how we're wired, you know, what speaks to us. Um, and, you know, if, I think very much that if we were all the same, how life would be boring. And, you know, <laughs> totally. <laughs> I totally agree to that. And, uh, yeah, yeah it, it really resonates to me what you're trying to say uh, right now because as uh, someone who's also a creative, uh, I always approach things as an episode. Uh, if, you, if, you're, if you're feeling down, if you're full of excitement. This is just an episode in your life or your your creative journey on which you can mm. you can write it, you can write with it, you can you can dwell with it, but at the end of the day is you have to just be authentic with what you're feeling. And, and exactly and and I see it when I'm teaching that there's some people that want to get it perfect and there's sometimes that you can't get it perfect. Sometimes I don't know about about um, all you uh, creatives out there. Is that sometimes you get a little tap on the shoulder, and it's like, hold on a minute, you've got to be creative. You haven't done anything for a while. Come on, the soul needs a little bit of feeding here. Um, who feels like that? Definitely me. And there's sometimes it goes, yeah, go on, go away, get into your little cave, just stay in there. You'll come out when you're ready. And so. I've learned that's very much um, you go with it and you don't get stressed over it. Yeah. Um, speaking of that question, that uh, specific like art type of art, can you show us any uh, examples of the things that you have created or generated? Yeah, sure. Let me do a quick share screen, the marvels of technology. <laughs> And I'll just get that over there. Let me just talk to myself as I do this, you know. So um, I, can, I can definitely relate. <laughs> oh, exactly. So this is my uh, imagination gallery. So my website's called Imagination, and there's a reason why it's called Imagination because I think your imagination has a lot to do with being creative. Some people are imaginative by, you know, it's just in their gene pool. Others need to work on it and some struggle. I have no problem admitting I'm mathematically challenged. So that's probably why I, I'm sort of into that arty stage. Um, and what I've got here is some collections of images that I've produced. Um, and these are just a few, but I'm going to share some of the stories and when I was talking about, as a creative, you share your feelings, your emotions, experiences, all sorts of things. And so in these collections, they've got some different stories in them. So, for example, I've got a collection, and this is my quirkiness. I love creating whimsy, um, but, you know, I can appreciate different types of, of uh, art. But here's, uh, I give my characters names. That's just one of my quirky little things. So this is Mr. Pigden. And the story about Mr. Pigden, it was purely created for fun. And the little guy in the front is Mr. Pigden. But the inspiration came, I was watching a video, and it was about an English soccer player called Ian Wright. And Ian Wright was sitting in a stadium, and he was talking about a teacher that really influenced him. And so unbeknownst to Ian, Mr. Uh, Pigden, his teacher was standing behind. And so when Ian Wright turned around, he saw his teacher and he took his hat off straight away. And so this influence was a story that when I looked at it, I thought it was just such a moment of respect for his teacher. So I created what I felt was my interpretation of Mr. Pigden. So there he is in his, you know, little bird's house and he's got the colours you'll see. I use textures for colour grading. I'm very particular with my colours. Um, I go for the soft subdued. So that's the story of Mr Pigden, um, which sort of sticks with, you know, with me. Um, if I look at these series, 
these are my Sherlock Holmes. Mm. Um, and Sherlock Holmes, I was binge watching the movies with Robert Downey Jr., Sherlock Holmes. And so the background's generated by AI and the gentleman, the Victorian gentleman, was actually created by AI. But when I do AI, I always go over to Photoshop. I'll work on what I want to work on, my colours, you know, I add more elements. Where did the conceptual thinking come in for this? So when I went into AI, I specifically designed backgrounds that would be old London laneways. And so I got this old, you know, old style building. When I was creating it, I was actually imagining those movie scenes and going, some of those movie scenes, the streets were very foggy, dark, damp. You know, there was a lot of play of light and shade in some of the scenes. And so I created this from my mind. So the conceptual thinking was, I need to add the light in, but I also added fog. And then I put some textures in to give it that real blue, mysterious feel. When you look at movies, have a look at their colour grading. If they want the scene to be light, they use colours effectively to make it light. If it's moody, if it's, you know, um, sort of scary, they'll change the colour palettes within there. So that was the well, probably the second one uh, that I actually did. This one here is another one from the Sherlock Holmes. Now, it again, it was a scene and it was very much about the woman in the window. So sometimes when I'm creating pieces, I will actually add in what I call a little gem to make the person look around. And so again, the background was created with AI. I, I put in the Victorian gentleman. I added the lady in the window very subtly. And just all it is, is about creating an image because I was binge watching um, Sherlock Holmes mm. so much. Um, and I learned a lot of skills within that one too. So I'm just going to come into another collection. Now, when I do one image, I tend to work on three or four. And the reason is that I, I like to get consistency in style or colouring, but it also helps with my conceptual thinking. So when I'm looking at these, this this really has a, a personal um, message for me. And uh, I created them in AI, went over to Photoshop, what I had to do with them, you know, colour grading and all of that. But the reason I call this collection Soul is that um, my mother passed at 95 years of age in September. And I was not feeling creative for a very long time. And so the little tap on the shoulder came and I thought, I'm just going to take the easy way. I'm going to create a whole image from AI. And that really helped me then get back into that creative. And that's why I called it soul, uh, because it was something that was speaking to my soul in a really hard time. And so, you know, I played around, did a, a few little things. So if I look at these images, I always say to people, it doesn't have to be world beating. It doesn't have to be a competition image. It's about you sharing yourself, part of your soul, and, and showing people, you know, different types of genres. So there's a couple of the collections um, and I'll come back in because there's a couple of little ones that I that I tend to like as well that have got a little bit of meaning in them is my innocence. And this is just a new collection and I'll add to these. And so this is all about, I, I found a quote, if I can explain it, and I, it says, while we try to teach our children all about life, our children teach us what life is all about. And so I've named the series Innocence. And so introduce mm -hmm. Anastasia. And to me, again, it was created with AI, which I'm doing a lot of now, but I'm adding textures, my own textures from my own photos, the colour grading in there. 
And to me, it was just that innocence of a child. What is the message? Is that I think as we get older, we forget to look through the eyes of a child. You can get a little bit jaded. And so, again, this is why I'm doing these series. So here's Olivia. Uh, and as I said, I like to give my characters a name. Um, and it just adds a little bit of quirkiness to it. Again, it's all about that innocence. And so that's going to be a collection that I'll, that I'll work on a little bit more. Then I start getting into some of the fun ones, the little... <laughs> Uh, the little quirky dash of whimsy and again that's a collection and I'm going to come into these ones because these are ones that tell stories and I think that is what conceptual thinking is about it's drawing mm. experiences drawing on your emotions your feelings um, and some of these are very much about when uh, we were in lockdown and these are the emotions that I was feeling at the time. So I'm going to open this one. I think uh, most people would uh, know, and I'll just click on it. We're just having it's a little bit of a not click moment. But this one here is the Sydney Opera House and mm. covered in sand. And it was just at that period of time for us in lockdown, I felt everything was closed in and, you know, there was no sign of life. Then if you look at this one here, uh, again, it reflects about being locked in and what I was feeling. I was feeling under a cloud, you know, I was feeling so hemmed in. And so that armchair represents me sitting in the inside looking out. And so, you know, I read books and, and things like that. This one down here with the crows, um, again, it's, it's sort of got a memory for me because my mother used to give me a Bryce Courtney book every Christmas. And so these books I photographed with Bryce Courtney. I added the crows, I added the bird cage and the moon. Has it got a story? No, it was just I wanted to create. So wow. some of the things that um, I'm actually you know creating and it's just a snapshot I've got a lot more but I think what it comes into is for me is when I sit there and I go oh, I want to create something do I choose the background do I choose an element first sometimes I don't know I'm not one to sit and plan methodically it just happens inside but I think that's because I've been doing it for so long it just becomes organic so i've been yes. playing away the uh, role of jim and julius you know, <laughs> sort of put your, <laughs> your tuppets with him because i can certainly go on a lot more yes uh wow i, I can definitely relate on that because I, i'm seeing a lot of your art and how you how, how the thought process is is actually being unraveled on this uh i know some of my fellow moderators would like to ask some questions uh jim yeah, julius sure. Happy to answer. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, I am very fascinated with the uh, the arts of uh, Sandra. So it's so fascinating, and it really resonates on the, her emotions and seeing her uh, arts. It's not only showing how beautiful it is, but it also shows uh, how her emotions pick apart on those arts. So it's actually when you're creating an art, it's not uh, only you're doing something or when it's not only adding textures or images, but it is a subjective part of being a creative. It's mm -hmm. always, the emotions is always part of creating something or showing something. It's not just the photos itself, but how does the creative or how does the creator shows his or her story about his, his or her designs. Mm. I'm so fascinated with your artwork, Sandra, and Thank so you. great, so awesome. Thank you. And, 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 and then sometimes, too, if I can just sort of say, it's also about having fun. I think yes. that you've got to have fun. You've got yes, to yes. enjoy it. You know, you may get frustrated, um, <laughs> but, hey, that's part of it. 
Um, but it's about having fun and going, I've got an idea. Oh, how do I do that? You know, and then you sit there and that's where you talk about it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, I know that some of those images would not, you know, I wouldn't put them into a competition uh, purely, <laughs> you know, because some of them are just what I've created. But it, it doesn't have to be this well-being image. And that's where, you know, just do what speaks to you. Um, and, and that's very, very much part of who I am. Yeah, that's it's very inspiring to to hear that. Like, um, to give you context, um, with I was actually able to relate to your journey. How you mentioned you continually uh, reinvented yourself. Uh, Sir Roland would know my journey as well. So I've I've also um came to do like a lot of things, and I'm actually at this point where. I am thinking, did I destroy my career by jumping so much everywhere? <laughs> but then, you know, hearing from you that uh, I, I get to think that maybe it's not too late. That maybe I didn't destroy my career. Maybe this is just a phase. So um, it's yeah. very motivating that, you know, we really just have to go through change and then we really have to go with the flow. And then I'm really amazed by your bravery to actually bear your emotions in your artwork and show vulnerability. Uh, like back in high school, uh, I was actually sharing a lot of my art and with teenagers, you know, puberty, um, th there's a really a dark face in there. And so a lot of my art were dark. <laughs> and then at, at some point, I, I stopped sharing them because I felt like I was spreading negative energy. But uh, you um, seeing you being able to really show those things in your art, it, I think it takes a lot of bravery. And I started thinking maybe I should start like sharing all of those dark artworks of mine again. <laughs> And Jen, if I can can answer it in 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 that too, is that um, I've got a few more years on, on you, and I say that in a good positive sense because you know you sometimes would I have done this ten years ago? Probably not. It was because of one door closed that another door opened for me. And so some people would look at my work, and they do, um, what I call the diehard photographers. And, and I respect it, you know, photography is their passion. I, I understand that. But for me, it's about creating art. And so some of them will look at it and go, oh, you know, do you sell your work? Do you do this and do that? And I think, yeah, I'm doing something that I'm passionate about. And so, Jim, what you've got to do is find who you are. And, and find, you know, what floats your boat, what speaks to you. Um, it took me a long while, and I'll say this to everyone who's a creative, it took me a long while to find my style. You know, I, I was trying all sorts of different things. You know, if I look back at some of my images, I think, my God, what was I thinking when I created that? Um, but I thought they were absolutely brilliant. Um, you know, and, you know, when I put into photography competitions and the judges would sort of give me, and I think, no, I don't agree with that, no, you know. So, <laughs> you know, it's some people, I, I look at some people's work, it's that real dark gothic stuff. It's not my personal style, but I can appreciate the skill and the thinking in that, and what they're doing is expressing themselves. And, and that's what an artist is. It's about expressing what they're feeling. You know, um, would someone put my photo up, uh, my image on a wall? Who knows? It doesn't matter because I'm creating for myself. And I think that's very much part of that journey. Yes. Yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> oh. It is very conceptual there, Roland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, another, another thing, another, another question that I asked, still is now is in my mind is do you have like any specific theme or concepts that inspire you to do most of your digital art um i i've seen that you're you're into that kind of uh specific style do you have any more influences or any like 
underlying concepts or themes? Um, I probably, because I expose myself to lots of different types of mediums, paintings and things, um, sometimes an idea pops in the head and it just goes, oh, I, I've, I know this will sound strange, um, <laughs> I've got a penguin. I could use a penguin somewhere. Mm. So I, I will start thinking, okay, how am I going to put this together? And, you know, then I look at um, some of the other words, like um, works like Maggie Taylor, um, any of those Kevin Sloan's, you know, they'll use different images. And I think, oh, that gives me an idea. So it's not that I follow a style, it's I get inspiration and I look at it. Now, if I look at um, a couple of them, um, Christian Scholl, and um, I've never worked out, I should do a research on it, whether it's a he or a she. <laughs> um, you know, thank goodness for Google, but I haven't done it. Um, I, I love the colouring. And so I love the colouring. And now I don't want to replicate that style and the subject, but I love the colouring, the muted colours. So inspiration comes from colour palettes that I look at from different arts. So if you look at my work, it's what I call a depth of colour and I build up the depth of colour. So I desaturate a lot and then I build the depth up over and over again. So I'm not doing what I call design work, commercial work. It's it's just what speaks to me. But so there's different mm. influences that, that I'll come in. Um, you know, sort of one of the things I love, uh, you know, going down the rabbit warren of Pinterest because you can just go <laughs> off and get lost in there. Um, and then I go, oh, I didn't know that artist. Oh, I'll go and have a look. And that's how I stumble on things. Um, you know, there's... there's you, can lead to that. <laughs> you know, it is a rabbit warren in Pinterest. You can start yes. on one thing and you end up somewhere else. Yes. I know, I know some of my call, uh, fellow moderators are also in that uh, rabbit hole. <laughs> right, Jem? <laughs> yeah, like aside from Pinterest, um, even when Adobe Firefly actually first started, it yep. it was also a rabbit hole for me. Like I started, I started like at 8 a.m., for example, and then before I knew it, it was... 5 p.m. and I was still not done generating ideas and stuff like so much inspiration sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and and I, Jim, I, you know, I think too. Um, for me, I look at AI. It allows me to create the backgrounds and things that I'll never be able to photograph. But what I also, and it's one of the things that I do teach, um, you know, in a couple of workshops on AI, is creating AI is actually good for the mental health. Yes. and a de-stressor and so I was teaching a guy who's a what I call a, a very rigid photographer and introduced him to AI he's just leaping heads you know leaps and bounds ahead and I said to him once it's a great de-stressor and then you can just sit there it's like coloring it's just another form of technology and expression and so you still have to use the human brain and the imagination you still have to think of concepts and then you then put it in and you think, well, that's not what I wanted. Uh, okay, let's let's work around, around that. But then I explain it as it's like Christmas. It's like you never know what you're going to get in that, that little parcel when you open it up and out comes something. So, you know, it's... And it's also to, um, Roland, talking about evolving. You know, changing the style, mixing it up, um, learning new technology. Um, you know, I I used to draw, but I don't draw. But I'd love to get in to start doing some digital drawing. But you know, there's so many things you want to do. So little time. <laughs> yes, so many things to do in so little time. <laughs> yes, always. Uh, Julius, do you have any more questions or any uh, thing that pops up in your mind? Uh, yes, sir, sir Alan. Uh, actually, uh, Sanja, I have uh, this question. So, uh, since I've seen a lot of your works, and some of them were uh, you mix the generation of AI and 
your own creativity. So how do you choose your subject for your digital arts pieces? As far as an element or background or subject, sort of, I might go in and I'll, I'll show, I'm going to show a, one of my generations from an AI and it, what it was inspired from. Um, then I'll look at things like um, generate, so I'm missing elements. So I might want to have a penguin, you know, so I've been working on one of these penguin things. So I don't have a photograph of a penguin. And it also comes in that I've found that when you're trying to blend a photo with AI, it takes a lot of work and a lot of skill to get them to blend colour match, you know, it doesn't look like it's stuck on. So sometimes now for me, it's all about working the digital art together, which makes it easier to blend it together. So it might be that I've seen something and I think, oh, I need a penguin or I need a sailboat and then I'll go in and generate that. But then I might go in like I did with Sherlock Holmes and I went, you know, London, uh, I put in the keywords, London laneways, 1800s, foggy. Um, so I'm, I'm getting that story happening. And so when I first did that, I was actually blown away with what it created because I thought there's no way I'd ever <laughs> be able to photograph something like that. Um, you know, and, and people say, oh, but yes, you can. I go, well, I can't fly over to London that easily and you can't see the old buildings, you know. So hold on a minute. Let's use the imagination. So it's, it's, it comes back to that organic. What do I need? What do I want to create? And sometimes I go in and play. And that's another thing that I'm really big about, playing. Give yourself permission to play. And you may not come out with something that's fantastic, but while you're playing, you're learning. And, yes. and that's where you develop your skill set of, of playing. Yes. I totally agree to that, Sandra. Uh, I have an uh, out-of-the-blue question because we're addressing uh, uh, arts. It's the topic of art. And... Uh, and together with AI, how much has been AI impact your work as an artist? So can you give me like um, some of the things that you find it hard when you do not use AI that that is like so game changing right now? Uh, look, for me, I see AI as another tool and another form of expression. Um, it can be frustrating because you've got something in your mind, but it doesn't come out the way that you have it in your, in your mind. So, uh, you know, dare I say it, you go to chat GPT, type, ask for a prompt, and then you get that prompt, and then you go, go over. <laughs> Technology, you use your resources. Um, um, it's changed my style. It's changed the way that I can create now. Um, you know, I still appreciate good photography, but there's some things that I will never be able to photograph. I, I will never have access to them, abandoned rooms, you know, um, all of those things. Um, you know, for here in Sydney where I live is I'd have to be going out hours and hours to look for some of those buildings and you've got to know where they are. So... By having AI, for me, it's just like, wow, it's just opened up another form of art form. And now I can let my imagination run wild. Um, and yes. for me, it's not about realism. You know, well, if I'm sticking a penguin in a boat, uh, <laughs> you know, and some people think, well, we need to have a chat uh, because it's not about being real for me. Um, and still maybe that little storytelling or that that little child that read all those books over those times and it's just all coming together yes uh sandra we have like uh we have a like a in person question like here uh i'm yep. not going to read uh it's from sir randy noblesa hi sandra are you into nfts <laughs> what kind of audience do you have for your work uh, I think it's a multiple question. Uh, what what type? What yeah. kind of you have? It's another work? multifaceted uh, question. There, I like those. Uh, no, um, I haven't gone down the NFT path. 
um, I, I sometimes sort of sit back and see trends and I think, eh, let's see where it goes. Um, not against it. Some people are, are into it. I've been approached for NFTs. I haven't gone down that path, not for any specific reason. I just haven't chosen uh, collaboration. Yes, I love working and collaborating with others, um, particularly other creatives. Um, and this is what I'm enjoying about doing something like this because this is talking to other creatives. I think that, you know, for creatives, it's sometimes hard to communicate to other creatives, you know, um, and you don't get a chance where you can freely say, well, I stuck in a penguin or I stuck in a line or something and no one looks at you a bit strange. Um, uh, and, you know, it's it's just about you know, working with others. Um, I think that sometimes um, you've got to work with your own space, but there's times that you've got to collaborate and, and engage with others. And the, the exchange of ideas, you know, because someone, you know, Jen might say something, right, oh, I hadn't thought of it. Well, that's interesting. And so that engaging conversation starts kicking the brain cells over, I think. Um, and that's how you learn, constant learning, no matter what age. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still, you know, learning all the time. So yeah. I hope maybe that was sort of a little bit, you know, but there was lots of questions in there, so I hope I answered yes. that one. I think we got uh, most of the answers to that question. And again, thank you, Sir Randy Noblesa, for that question. And uh, uh, I all, uh, I'm also thankful that you're here to, to watch the live session because... This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to have Sandra here as our guest speaker. Uh, any questions from our fellow moderators right now? Do you want me to share an image, break down an image if there's no questions? Sure, sure. sure. That would be great, Sandra. Yep. So let me, I'll just, uh, I'll bring up one that, this is where... I, I talk about where do you get inspiration? Where where do you get an idea? Something that, that's happened. So I'm going to bring up this here. So uh, Roland, can you just let me know if you can see my image there? Yes. Yeah. So this is my Photoshop, my little uh, happy place. And uh, this is the end image. Now, I can look at it now. This was created probably two years ago, I think. Um, I can look at it and go, yeah, there's a couple of things I could have done better. But why look in the past? You're learning, you're looking, and you're seeing things differently two years down the track. So this image was inspired um, when the Ukraine war started and it was on the news and it was saying that people had five minutes to pack their belongings and move out, get out. And it made me think, well, what would an adult pack within five minutes as opposed to what a child would pack uh, wow. in five minutes? And so it got me thinking. Um, again, a story like that made an impact on me and I, I, I had to create. So what I'm going to do is just break down and then my conceptual thinking in why. So that's the base image of a photo. And then it's like, it's too bright, you know, what am I going to do? And I automatically then thought in my head, I want it to be dark, moody, foreboding. So I need to choose the colour, the palette that I want that mood to come across. So... I then did a couple of what I call base sort of, you know, layers with selected colour. Then I looked at the window and I thought, okay, it's it's bright. I'm going to put a curtain across. So I filled with the curtain on the opacity and did a few things. But I also knew that um, I wanted to have a suitcase with some possessions. So, Julius, you asked about how I choose my elements. Um, when I put this suitcase in, I got it from Pixel Squid because AI wasn't sort of big at that time and I was just sort of thinking about it. So 
I, if I was doing that now, I would create that in AI if I didn't have the suitcase that I wanted. So now I start thinking, what would a child pack? What would I pack? And books, because I love books as a child. So I put those books in. Then I thought, okay, what would be a favourite toy for a child? And that would be the pen. So it's all, the real story revolves around this, is what would a child pack? Um, think about it, five minutes, you know, you're just going to, to grab stuff. So then I did the brightness and the contrast and, you know, levels, all of those things. Then I did a hue and saturation layer, which I really flatten the colours to build up the depth. I, I, I do my colour grading very incrementally, if that makes sense. Then I put a texture over it, which really gave that blue green. And now it's it's talking to me. It's going, yeah, I can I can feel this. I can feel the mood in it. So then I did another layer. Then I've come in and I've used Nick and I used the analog in there. And that gives me some different colour depth in. You know, if I look at some of these layers, the opacity would be right down to about 30%. So I'm not having that full opacity to 100%. I drop it down constantly, desaturate to build that depth up. Then I looked at it and I thought there needs to be a little bit of light. So you can see I painted in some light. I did dodging on the suitcase and the bed. Then I thought, uh, this used to be my signature piece when I was creating around about this time. And signature pieces for me could be clouds, birds. That, that was sort of a bit of my style. So I put the bird there and the bird represents trying to escape, to go through that window, to get that freedom. So then as I build through, I start doing a bit more light, uh, I've got lots of layers in there. Then I'll do a darken and lighten. So it's sort of what I call it gives it a vignette. And so it gives it that spotlight on the bed, the light and the suitcase. So I'm building up my mood. Um, I do another spotlight just to add a little bit more light because when I'm looking at it, I'm thinking I need, need a little bit more light. I need that light and shade. Then I did some hue and saturations. There's a few layers in this one. I did a photo filter to give it a little bit more of a warm. Uh, the photo filter that I chose was a warm colour, like an orange. So this is where I'm working on colour balance. So if I feel that there's a lot of cool tones in there, I might add in a, a warm colour. And it could either be by a photo filter or a solid colour fill, whatever. If it's got too much blue tones, then I would reverse that and put that into a warm tone. So it's very much that colour theory. If you look at the basics, what's the opposite of warm and cool? Um, and then you've got all your different colours. It just, to me, it's, it's, I don't consciously think about it. I just do it organically. So I've added a few more layers, but then I wanted to add in a crack on the wall to give it that real old European look. And so that's very much, I've added in some light and there's my image. So for me, it was all about the story. What would a child pack within five minutes? And so I just built that up. And that was really just some, what I call basic elements, the suitcase of books, the teddy bear and that bird. Uh, and sometimes what I do, is that if I'm setting up my compositions, I'll work in a triangle. So for me, if I look at the shape here, it comes down to the bed, but I am making I drift up to the bird. And so I'm sometimes I want the viewer to go, well, what's a bird doing there? And some people have got no idea, and some people will try and work it out. It's just a little gem that I've thrown in. But here I've been talking about penguin. And so this is Percy Penguin. And uh, I had fun with him. And this is my little whimsy. So this one, again, was created in AI. So there's the base. There's something that I created in AI purely as a background. So when I look at the boat, I go, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to stick an animal in. 
and I chose a penguin. The influence comes from Kevin Sloan's work. He does a lot of animals that are in different sort of environments. Um, and he's a painter, not a photographer. I knew that I had to introduce the canvas on it because it didn't have enough depth. So I've increased the canvas. I've done a AI boat and I did a bit of masking so I could get the sail in. I did try generative fill on that, but I just couldn't nail the sail. So I thought, oh, okay, I'll go over and AI and, and make a boat and take the sail. There's Percy. I've whacked him in. He's what I call from my stash. And when I say my stash, quite often I'll go into different um, places and buy graphic digital art and I've got a, a stash that I can go, oh, I need a penguin or I need this. And uh, then I've desaturated him a little bit. Then I've added it to the sky to give the depth. This was purely fun. And so then I've done a hue and saturation. A saturation and so that really drops the colours to what I like. That's my style. So then this is where the concept thinking comes in and I'll talk about it is I looked at it and I went talking to me I like the colors but I don't know what's missing so I experiment I play so I put another background an AI background over the top which gave those little fish and I went oh that gives me what I call the balance now this is just how my eye works some people might look at it and go oh it's too busy or oh, you know whatever but that's fine now the conceptual thinking comes in. Okay, so Percy's in a boat. He's on an adventure. What would he be doing? He needs food. So in goes a basket. What needs to be in that basket? Fish. So I whacked in some fish. <laughs> they were done by generative fill. Um, I have an action that reattaches the white, so I use that action. Then I used the photo filter and I gave that photo filter cyan and I'll use cyan quite a lot. So if I turn that layer off and on, it just gives me that, what I call that blue tone, and brightness and contrast, a few more layers in there. Oh, I should have done this in the beginning, hey, but I use gigapixel to upscale. I usually do that at the beginning, but you know, hey, it doesn't matter, I just played. And so then I come in towards the end. So for some, when I'm using a composite like this, one of the techniques that I will use is put noise on grain. And that's what I call it disguise. It sort of disguises some of those elements that I've put in. And that's, you know, um, Percy Penguin, fun image, no story, I had fun. And I think that's what it's all about. So they were yeah. just two there that <laughs> broke down very quickly. Any questions? Wow. wow. <laughs> Any uh, thoughts? Anything? Julius, Gem? I yes. actually yeah, I learned a lot. Like it was a uh, just the workflow and the, the transformation with the layers and the color combination. Yeah, I learned a lot. So thanks so much for sharing that. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jim. And, and that ties in when you first learn, a, um, you know, Photoshop or any program, uh, but Photoshop's my, my tool of choice, is when you first start, get a consistent workflow. When you work on a consistent workflow, then your style evolves. And I'm talking about creating art. I'm not doing commercial. When you're doing commercial work, you've got a brief, you got to work to that brief. I get that. Um, and so then when I got a consistent workflow, I used to have a chart printed out next to my monitor and then I'd go, oh, hold on a minute. What does it say? Oh, levels. Because the feedback I was constantly getting, your tones are muddy. And I'm like, what the hell are tones are muddy? I've got no idea. Um, but anyway, so then as I, I built up uh, my skills and then I would create images with, a technique in mind so i would say i'm going to use uh, motion blue and so i would use motion blue or i would use a photo filler i force myself to use different techniques 
And so that's where it becomes organic now. I can just look at it and go, oh, yeah, I think it needs this. I think it needs that. So, yeah. Yes, it is, Randy. Definitely. Creativity is so much fun. It'd be boring if we were just looking at sort of, you know, the same type of images, you know, giraffes, anything. No, no rules. Anything else? Anyone, anyone else got some questions out there, Roland? Uh, yes, I do have questions, Sandra. And before that, before I give my questions, uh, I really love how you play the AI part in showing or integrating your creativity. Like AI doesn't just uh, just by generating images on AI. It doesn't. It is not the final. We should uh, always play with our creativity and how we can integrate or how we can uh, uh, we can advance those uh, generated by AI and. Uh, seeing your work with Sherlock Holmes, really, uh, I felt something mis mystery about that because I not I didn't actually watch the Sherlock Holmes, but I watched the Enola Holmes, sister of yep. Sherlock, and yep. it really resonates the story about the movie about the mystery and the what are they trying to find on those images. And thank you so much for having those samples that you've also shown to us and it's very fascinating it's very inspiring to show how you uh, tell your story on your creative works and i do have this question that how can you use the symbolism or how can you use the symbolism or the metaphor contribute to the overall message and meaning of your digital art yeah, that, uh, that, I looked at that question because I, I did get a list of questions off Roland and I looked at it and I went, oh, the metaphors and the symbolism. Oh, wow, hold on a minute. Um, and I'll probably answer it in an honest way. I don't think of that purposely. So it doesn't play, but then I thought about it, it does play. So the symbols, if I think about it, is it can be the choice of the colour palette in a symbolism. Now, symbolism can mean different things for different people, but the symbolism can be in the colour, but it also can be in the elements and the objects. So it's, I don't think about it purposely. It just sort of evolves for me. Um, but then I... If I look at it, say, a little metaphor, um, for me, it, when I put that little bird in, that little bird had a secret message to it. It was it trying to escape. But not everyone would get that. And, and you, you know, when you, you enter competitions and you hear the judges, so because I've entered um, international photography competitions, um, and, you know, they'll, they'll say things that... Um, you know, my tones are muddy or uh, I, I don't get this story um, and, and you know, where's the story? And I think not every image has to have a story. You know, an image is, yes, it may be sharing a story or it may be that you just need to feed your soul with something creatively. Um, so for me now, I don't enter the competitions and there's, there's, the gloves are off now, so I can, the, the, the uh, how could I put it, the Pandora's box is open, I can create whatever. I'm not, I am not creating to rules. I know that's sort of a real roundabout, but this is where the freedom has come in. I, I don't have to create something and go, you only can do this, you only can do that, you can only, because I think that when you apply rules constantly, and this is just my personal opinion, um, is that say if you're entering competitions, you're working to rules, and I understand there has to be rules at times. But when you're putting those um, blockers on people, like, so that metaphor and symbolism, I probably do it in just little ways, but I don't think of it. Um, I was trying to think of a real intelligent answer on that one, but I thought, no, I'm not that deep. <laughs> Don't worry, Sandra. And I, I, I really appreciate that that piece of um that piece of art that you have created because 
I've never had imagined that there that that's a story about uh, a five year old and uh, what we're going to do if you have only have five minutes. It's it's really yeah. touching for me. Uh, it really resonates me to to my empathic side, which is, oh, what would I do? <laughs> you also have that kind of situation. So. Uh, the storytelling and also the meaning of the image, especially the bird that you added, is it's really, it's really trivial to me. Yeah, and when, when you explain that, it's it, it gives a lot of clarity. Uh, it, it explains everything. No, thank you, and and I think too, when when you're with creatives, um, sometimes it's just not all in a nice little bundle. It's, it's, we're all looking at different things, what inspires us. Um, and so it's sometimes it's not a coherent structure, but what we're trying to do is share what's in us. And I think that's the beauty of being a creative. Um, and, you know, don't let someone stop you from being creative. If it brings you enjoyment and happiness, go for it. And, and I think it all ties in what the message that what I was trying to do is give you the idea of concepts, thinking of concepts. One of the tricks that I have when I'm creating is I have Lightroom open all the time. And the reason that I've got that is that let's say I've got a background and I look at the image and I don't have an idea. So then I'll go into my Lightroom and my stash with all my digital art and backgrounds and everything. And so sometimes I've got them, I'm OCD, so I have them, you know, my animals in a folder, animals, um, you know, people, I sort of have it really structured. And I find just them scrolling through in my Lightroom catalogue, I look at it and I go, oh, wow, look at that penguin with the umbrella. That's so cool. That would be fabulous in that, that boat. But I never had an idea beforehand. So I visually look at it, and that's where conceptual thinking comes in. And who's to say that penguins with an, with an umbrella can't be in a boat? There's no <laughs> law against that. True on point. <laughs> uh, I really enjoy this session, uh, especially with you, Sandra. And uh, I, I hope uh, Gem and also, I know Gem and uh, Julius also has a lot of things that uh, we would like to ask you, um, and we, we want we, we don't want to keep you over the time of what we. Yeah, are no, I'm, I'm I'm fine. Oh, you know, <laughs> if I, you know, if you want to wrap up, or I can go a little bit longer. If there's questions, anyone's <laughs> got questions, happy to. Yes. Um. Uh. One final question is that, um, Sarah, can you give us like any, um, uh, like, parting words or any like words of wisdom that you. As someone as an artist, as such as you are, uh, I'm really I'm really thrilled with the, the things that you have created and the the stories behind them. Um, oh gee, this is getting deep and meaningful, Roland. Um, <laughs> don't let anyone stop you from trying, and the biggest thing is you can be your own worst enemy that you know if you have that creative part in you then go out it may not resonate with someone family or whatever but follow what your passion is and i'd say that because when i left school i wanted to become a window dresser what they called a window dresser which would have designed the windows in the shopping right and so I had that, what I call that arty side in me then, but I couldn't get that job. Uh, different times, you know, I just didn't get that job for various reasons. Not that I wasn't capable, it was just more of a, a male-dominated working environment coming from my generation, yeah? So, you know, then life comes in and then, I'm now, I said to you earlier, I'm at the place I was meant to be. But I'm in from a different generation. And so it age is just a number. So if you're young and you've got that passion, go for it. If you're mature and quirky like someone like me, don't <laughs> stop. 
because you only get one chance at a passion and that chance is now or it may be in 10 years but never never stop expressing yourself creatively um because that's wow. what, that's why we're wired the way we are truth bombs <laughs> falling truth bombs <laughs> Uh, um, a little bit deep. Good grief! It's midnight here. That's a bit deep. <laughs> yes, uh, Julius Gem. Uh, any words for Sandra? <laughs> uh, so for me, it's a really thank you so much for gracing us with your presence here. Uh, we appreciate it so much. And as Sir Roland said, there are so many truths and learnings with what you've shared and. Um, like as I mentioned earlier, like I'm at the stage where sometimes I, I I think like have I ruined my life, my career? But with you saying that you know there's always movement. Like uh, maybe I'm not yet where I'm supposed to be right now, but I just have to keep on moving and keep on creating, and maybe I'll one day I'll find myself where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, you know the the biggest trick, Jim, is it's not um how can i put it not everything in life is easy and it's the ones that have a stumble and it's whether you pick yourself up and then you steer and i'll just share on on that when COVID came down around you know in that 2020 i was a tour guide in tourism and so there was no work so i had to reinvent myself and that's how i ended up being a teacher online and being more creative one door shuts, one door opens, um, you know, and never knock back an opportunity. Yep. It's been fun. Thank you very much for having me. Yes. Yes. I totally agree with what Sandra said. So it's very inspirational for me. So it's it's really resonates on the, with the emotions that you're carrying on with your digital arts. So it's so very passionate. It's really resonates with the viewers, especially for me. So it's very inspiring uh, having your artworks and showing it, to, showing it to us. And I totally agree on what you're saying that uh, you should always find your passion and always mm -hmm. uh, look on what are you uh, truly made for and always have your creativity. Even there's a door closed, there's always a door that will be open. Yep. And thank exactly. you so much. Yep. No, thank you. It's been a real pleasure. And that I don't know whether we've lost Roland or have we lost Roland? <laughs> yes. I, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm he's sorry, back. Yeah. Um, it's been a real pleasure, Roland. I've enjoyed, you know, chatting away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think I uh, we have like Julius to share anything before we end the session. Now we had a little bit of a chat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yes, sir. We just ha had a chat, but uh, I just want to have some quick shout out if if I would have this opportunity. So I just want to have a quick shout out with Sir Randy Nublesa for giving us the question. Also, Sir Randy is one of the members of Maapi Marapa. Wow. Hello, sir. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for joining, Randy. Thanks for joining. I'm going to present on my screen a little token of appreciation to Sandra because she was like, like so awesome. <laughs> like <Ooh>. so awesome. <laughs> I'm going to share my screen uh, to present the where is that file? Share screen. I'm having a lot of technical difficulties difficulties lately. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's all right. The gremlin strike. Are you yeah, right? the gremlin strikes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm presenting this certificate of appreciation to our resource speaker Sandra Dan for her contribution to this episode, which is episode three of the Creative Spotlight, uh, focusing on conceptual thinking in creating digital art. This is presented on the 24th day of January, signed by yours truly, and I really appreciate stories the actual process the actual workflow that you have in your in that poster i i, I could have like 
forget that poster because it evokes a lot of emotions on my head. <laughs> I'm a very emotional yeah. being. <laughs> nothing wrong with that, Roland. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, I know you like it, Again, thank you, Sandra, for being here in this session. And uh, uh, to our viewers who's been uh, is going to watch this on live and also to our team replay <laughs> for those who are going to watch this on a later date. Again, thank you for uh, watching this. Uh, thank, thank you, Julius. Thank you, Jim, for being uh, our co collaborators here in this episode. And also, again, and again, again, awesome Sandra from Sandra the Imagery. Um, check out my website. Yes, yes, you can you can check out uh, check out Sandra's website at www.sandraimagery.com. Uh, this one. Uh, you can yep. see a lot of her work there on Imagination Gallery uh, that we covered here. Insta, Facebook. Yes. Uh, do you have like um, like social media channels, Sandra? No, I'm just, <laughs> I've got Pinterest, <laughs> yeah. Facebook. Okay, not to forget. Yep. I think, how many more do I need? <laughs> <laughs> you have your Facebook account, right? Facebook and also Pinterest. Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. That okay. That's so be... Instagram and Facebook. Okay. Thank Again, you. Sandra. Thank you, thank you, and uh, we'll see you on uh, our viewers to Creative Nation Academy. We'll see you on the next episode uh, in the in a few weeks, and uh, this will be a very exciting episode that we're we're trying to cook up with a lot of you. Again, thank you, everyone, and have a great night or evening or morning. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you so much, Sandra. Uh, thank you.